Hello everyone, it's Laura Husband here from Hairdressers Journal International and today we have our first HJ Styling Masterclass supported by Babyliss Pro and we are graced with the presence of session stylist Richard Philippart who also runs the multi-award winning Boutique Atelier Salon in Cheshire which you can see in his gorgeous backdrop today and then Richard is going to be focusing on the fundamentals of dressing hair up. He'll be starting with the prep of the hair using Babyliss Pro tools and then he'll be focusing on the construction of the hair up, how to hold the hair, which pins and grips to use and how to set the hair in place. And if you'd like any information about the tools that he'll be using to create his look today on his stunning mannequin that you can see in the background there, you can go to babyliss.pro.co.uk as well. So hello, Richard. It's lovely to have you with us today. Oh, hi, everyone. Um, yeah, super excited to do some hairdressing after um, a few weeks from home. At home, I sort of skipped out the... Um, the house this morning to come and brush some hair so we're very excited i know we're before and during before the live we were talking a bit about homeschooling weren't we all fun and games so yeah we've got we've got yes. you away from that this morning richard which is fantastic <laughs> maybe more excited not to be holding homeschooling than i am to be doing hair but doing yeah, hair, exactly. they're, they're close. <laughs> oh brilliant well do you want to maybe tell us a little bit about what you'll be um showing us today yeah so um i thought that we would have a little look at hair dressing hair up so lots of the time when I'm talking to people through social media or on uh, education days and at events, um, lots of hairdressers can be really scared of hair up. And lots of you guys will know absolutely in the salons that you work in, there'll be one or two um, people that do the hair up and everyone else sort of shoes it over onto those people. So what I wanted to really focus on today was those sort of core fundamentals of dressing hair up. So how do we um, prepare the hair to make it easier? How do we hold the hair over to one side? How do we elevate the hair? How do we position the hair? Because until you know all these different steps and what tools to use and what products to use, then it's really difficult to create anything. Everything just sort of falls apart. Whereas if you think about those fundamental steps and how we construct the hair, then you can create anything that's in your mind to create. Perfect. That's brilliant, Richard. And um, so you've got your gorgeous mannequin there next to yeah. you, haven't you? So um, when we are doing hair up in our salon, um, we prep every client's hair. So whether it's someone going the races, um, a night out or a wedding, you know, all them things that we've not been able to do for a year. Whether you go into one of those things that we can't go to, um, we always prepare the hair. So by that, what I mean is we wash, we dry, we tongue every client's hair before we do the hair up. Now that may, might sound counterintuitive and like it takes a really long time, but the team at my salon, everyone just has 45 minutes to do all of those things in. So we wash it, we tongue it, we'd wash it, dry it, tongue it and hair up in a 45 minute window. If you've prepared the hair properly at the beginning um, with the right texture, with the right movement through the hair, the hair up part of it is really quick and easy, but it becomes difficult and time consuming doing hair up when you're fighting against the products in the hair, when you're fighting against the movement and the texture in the hair, that's when it starts to take a long time. So we always prep the hair first. So to prep um, my glamorous model's hair today, I've gone through and washed all of the hair and then I've gone through each section of the hair and sprayed setting lotion into every section. Now, bear in mind, when we talk about using products, um, we're not just sort of doing this, we, you know, oops, a daisy. We're not just um, spraying it on all over. We're going through section by section and spraying it from root to tip all of the way down every section in sections almost as small as you would take when you're cutting hair. So really fine sections. If we just spray the product over the top of the hair, whether you're doing blow dries or hair up or anything, you're going to have all of that whole smoothness shine on the top area, but nothing underneath. So right, yeah. when you've done your um, blow dry or you've put your tongue in, it might hold on the top, but the bottom will drop really quickly. So making sure that we've applied that product all of the way through really evenly is super, super important. Then what we've done is we've gone in and we've used the um, Babyliss Pro Italia Brava hair dryer. Um, this is the hair dryer that I use in the salon. I absolutely love it. And one of my favorite things about it is, can you see this attachment that comes, that's on the back of it? This comes in the box when you're buying it. This is a silencer. So it actually helps to reduce the noise of your hair dryer when you're talking with clients and working in the salon. Um, and at the salon here, when there's everybody's in and we're all working and all the hair dryers are on, it can get really loud. And we've noticed since we've started using these attachments, a huge difference from that point of view. 
And actually, um, Richard, just thinking as well, it's um, a bit of a challenge in the salon with wearing face masks and hearing people, isn't it? So having a, a quieter yeah. hairdryer must make a big difference. <laughs> it makes a huge difference. I mean, you can still sort of, you know, nod along and pretend um, and zone out the times <laughs> that you want to, but it does help those ladies that you like to talk to and um, we've been able to keep in touch with them. Um, I definitely find with the, the visor makes the most difference more than the mask for me. Um, with being able to hear and being able mm. to talk like amongst the team, like sort of, you know, in the past, you'd be able to sort of mouth over to an apprentice on the other side of the, the salon, you know, to get you some foils or to get something, whereas you have to sort of like wave them down now and yeah. sign with things across <laughs> the salon to get anyone to know. Um, so we've got our silencer on our hair dryer. Our hair is wet and we've got set in motion all of the way through. And you'll notice that we took the nozzle off. So one of the things that I see lots of when I'm going um, into salons is people blasting the hair with the nozzle on the hair dryer, which is really counterintuitive. So the nozzle on your hair dryer is designed to make the air flow really, really narrow. So when you're blow drying, you can put the air exactly where you want it and in the direction that you want it to be. So that means if you try and blast the hair with your nozzle on your hair dryer, you're blasting the hair with a really thin, um, a really thin um, column of air. So it's going to take a really long time because you're actually only putting a little bit of air onto the hair. So we always take the nozzle off when we're blasting the hair so that we get a bigger circle of air getting it and it's quicker to dry. Fantastic. Also, when we're, doing, when we're doing hair up, I want as much grip and texture in the hair to hold those clips in place as possible. So by blasting the hair rather than blow drying the hair, all of my cuticles are slightly open and slightly rough. So when I'm putting my grips and pins in, there's that little bit of texture and it helps to keep them in there. Obviously, if I had a client with really curly hair or really frizzy hair, I would blast it. And then at the last moment, I'd just go through with a paddle brush and smooth it out a little bit. But in general, we always blast the hair first. And um, then we're going to use our Babyliss Pro Titanium Expression Tongue. So this is the 25 mil tongue. And um, they come in lots of different sizes. But the 25 mil, if you like looking to build up your kit, is a great sort of like all round one. You can do like little old lady tongs of it, or you can do soft waves of it, big bouncy curls. It's a good sort of like starter tongue for your kit if you're looking at building it up. Oops. So we are also making sure that our tongue is set on the temperature of 185 degrees. And um, the tongue's up to about 200 degrees. You don't need anywhere near that kind of heat for. Um, for, for European hair like this, for soft hair. If you've got really coarse hair or very thick hair, you go a little bit higher. If I was working on a model that had bleached hair or heavily highlighted hair, I'd lower it a little bit. Don't just put your tongue on the highest heat because sometimes you can over-process the hair with that. So we're gonna put yeah. our movement in um, first. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our section of hair and you can see we're just sort of like randomly taking it. Um, what I want is to have just a natural movement going through this. So if I section it really like beautifully, like we would if we were doing a curl, then it becomes really balanced and really symmetrical. And that's not what we're trying to achieve. We're just trying to put some movement in there loosely. So grab a section of hair. We're gonna open the tongue up. And can you see how we're hitting the hair, the tongue with the hair flat, and then we twist it once it's hit the tongue. That's really, really important. If you twist the hair first and then tongue it, the twist is so tight, the heat doesn't get through it. So we want to hit the hair flat, twist and pinch your fingers like that. Then you twist it around the barrel. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the barrel up and down the hair. So what this does is it heats the hair up as it goes around the tongue, creating a curl, but it pulls it straight while it's hot at the same time. So then we end up with these really great sort of relaxed waves going through the hair. Sorry, I've lost an ear. <laughs> um, these really great relaxed waves going through the hair. So just to show you again on this last section. So we hit the barrel with the hair flat, twist and pinch them fingers, twisting the hair around, and then we pull it up and down the hair. So we're curling it as it goes around the tongue and we'll pull it straight while it's still hot, which distorts the curl. And that way we get, like you said, these really great waves. That's beautiful. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? Now, really you can good. See my ear is not doing very well when I lean that way. So sorry about this, gang. Um, I've got one more section here, sorry. So we're gonna hit it, twist, and then we pull it back in two. Perfect, we had a we've had um, some questions coming in. Yeah, excellent, um, questions, cool. 
So um, someone's, um, Kelly has asked, which setting lotion would you recommend, Richard? Um, hi, Kelly. So it depends on, you know, the range of wet products that you use in the salon and what's going to be uh, the best for you. I like something that's got heat protection in it and something that's got texturizers in it as well. Um, so I use the um, L'Oreal Professional Play Setting Lotion as my like go-to one. Um, it's great for hair ups, it's great for blow dyes, for anything really. It's like an all-round um, good setting lotion. Um, it's this one that's in like a spray bottle as well, so it's really easy to apply on long hair rather than one that you would shake out. Um, so once we put that movement in, we're just going to break it all up with a wide tooth comb. Now, the reason that we put movement in the hair when we're going to be dressing the hair up mm. is it helps the hair to bend around your hands and it helps the hair to bend into the positions that you want it to be. If it's been blow dried really straight or it's like straight from the day before, um, it can sometimes be hard to bend it. Now, just to sort of touch on what we talked about earlier about that we prep everyone's hair in the salon and go through this process for everybody, all our clients at the salon is you've got to sort of think from like a serious point of view um, gang, like, would you want to get married with dirty hair? Like, it's just a really sort of like old fashioned um, concept that it's best to wash your hair the day or two before you're gonna be having it put off. If you uh, understand the wet line that you're using and you use your heated appliances in the right way, it's so much nicer for the client. It's so much better for you. And it elevates what you're offering from every other salon locally as well. and means that you're offering a more rounded and a better service. Um, so we always, always um, advocate for prepping your client's hair first rather than them just coming in with having washed it themselves the day before. Yeah, that's, that's great like, tip there. Some, sometimes shampoos that they can use at home can be really heavy in silicone, which means mm. that the hair is really slippy. Um, and just getting all of that junk out and knowing exactly what is in there mm. is perfect. The same as if we're doing, you know, just like um, curly hair um, for a client, we don't allow clients to come in and just have it toned. It's always like washed and prepped first because we know then we put the right mousse in it, the right set and lotion in, that that's going to last, you know, for the whole night. It's going to last the whole day. Whereas when you don't know what they've got in their hair to start with, it's always, you know, a little bit risky. Amazing. So, Can we... Just before yeah. we keep going, Richard, we've got a couple more questions. First of all, the silent, if we go back right to the beginning with the silencer on the hairdryer, yeah. can you use that silencer on any hairdryer? Um, so it comes with the um, Italia Brava hairdryer in the box. So it's not actually a separate um, thing that I've bought for it. It's one that right. came with this hairdryer. Um, I do not know if it fits on other ones. I'm going to guess no, because I imagine they're all different sizes mm -hmm. at the back. Um, but it's designed for this one. You can see like the lines, like line up with it and everything. So Perfect. It's and what was the, what was, someone's asked what the name of that hairdryer was. Yeah. Um, so it's the Babyliss Pro Italia Brava hairdryer. So it comes with two different backs. You get like a normal um, like mesh back and then you get the silencer and it comes with two different nozzles, like a wide um, one and a thin one. I like the thin one because I like real precision with my hair drying. So I can get, well, I found with the, the small nozzle, this one, I can get like really close to the client's head because it's really narrow and it's going in a really fine line. So I can get right in the roots to really lift out any frizz or lift any movement into it. But it comes with a wider nozzle as well if you prefer like a little bit more airflow. Amazing. And then we've also been um, asked a few questions about the tongue as well. So Lucy and yeah. Claire have both asked, um, could you um, talk us through which tongue you used again? Um, so we're using the Babyliss Pro Titanium Expression Tongue. And this is the 25 mil tongue. So they come in all different sizes and they're all, they're all these are my favorite tongues, the titanium expression in the Babyliss Pro range. They have a couple of different ranges internally, but this is the one that I prefer. Um, I just like how balanced the heat is all of the way up the um, tongue. Some tongues get like really hot, the heating elements here. So it gets really hot here and it's not quite as hot here. Whereas this has got a balanced heating element inside it. So it's much more, um, quicker to heat the hair. I mean, you see when we're doing it, it only has to be on for a few seconds and we're able to get heat all of the way through. And we're only using these, like we mentioned earlier, at 185 degrees mm. on sort of medium thickness and um, European hair. That's the best temperature. If you've got coarser and thicker hair, then you would go higher. And if you've got highlighted hair or finer hair, you would go lower with your heat. But always sort of play with the heat settings and don't just whack them on the hottest heat that they go on. 
Fantastic, Richard. And one more question before we let you yeah. carry on. And um, this Sorry. one is from this one's from Kelly. And um, she's asked, um, how long would you dedicate to kind of an updo service? Because um, she seems to think it would take you quite a long time to do all of those curls yourself. Or do you have more than one stylist on um, the client so to do in, all of the curls? No, no. At the salon, um, for all of our stylists, um, we allocate 45 minutes to wash, dry, tongue and put the hair up. So um, if you remember, we talked at the very beginning that we are only blasting the hair off. So that should take, you know, four or five minutes to blast dry the hair. You're not blow drying it as such. You're just drying that product into it. So then you've got about sort of 20, 25 minutes to tongue it. And you've still got another 15 to 20 minutes left at the end to put the hair up. If you sort of like break it down like that, it's quite a, you know, a good amount of time, four to five minutes to be able to do it. Amazing. Thank you, Richard. That should hopefully answer your question there, Kelly. No problem. Um, questions are great, guys. Like, ask the way, because otherwise I'll just, like, waffle on for, you know, hours about um, hair up. So our next step. So we're going to start looking at how we put hair up. So before we do that, it's really important that we think about the tools that we're going to be using. So when we dress hair up, we're going to be using um, grips. So this is a grip. And then we're going to be using pins. So this is a pin. So the reason that I wanted to really differentiate between those two things is a lot of the time we just tend to do our hair ups using Kirby grips. Now, Kirby grips are great, um, but a Kirby grip is a finishing tool. It's to anchor the hair in place and stop it from moving. So sometimes when you picture these really like soft, um, romantic, ethereal wedding hair ups, but then you create it all with um, Kirby grips because you're locking all of the curls in and anchoring all of the curls as you go. It becomes quite rigid and quite hard, which then starts to date your hair up. If you use pins, um, anywhere where you want the hair to move and have flexibility, we use a pin. And anywhere that we want to lock that hair in place and we don't want it to go anywhere, we use a grip. So that's sort of like a good way of remembering when you would use one as opposed to the other. So our first thing that we're going to be focusing on, remember, we're going to be looking at the fundamentals of hair up. So how do we get the hair to do one thing and do another that then becomes a style? So what I'm hoping that you'll get from today is not necessarily learn the hairstyle that I'm showing you, but the techniques that I'm showing you to create this hairstyle, you'll be able to then use to create your own styles. Um, if you do sort of use any of these techniques or you find any of these great, um, you can contact me on Facebook and Instagram, both at Richard Philly Part. So we're going to do up. We want this hair to come up now. So that's what we're going to be focusing on. We're going to be focusing on volume. How do we create volume in a hair up and how do we keep that volume there? So the first thing that we're going to look at is we're going to section our top area here. And we want this to have volume in. So we'd go straight away in and back comb. Now, if we back comb using a pintail comb, what happens is if you can see a pintail comb, because the teeth are so small, it's quite an aggressive piece of equipment. It's a really like tough comb on your hair. So can you see how much hair it pulls down into the back combing? So I've not really got a lot of hair left to actually do my hair up style with. So we don't use combs when we're doing our hair ups. We work with brushes. So I'm just going to brush this out first. Whoops, Daisy. I'm sure we'll get asked, Richard. So I'll ask you ahead of time about yeah. the, the brush that you've chosen to use there. Um, so I'm just brushing the hair out. This is a Mason Pearson brush, and this is the Poplar um, brush in the bristle and nylon. Um, these are quite expensive brushes, but if you've got, we just missed Christmas, but if you've got a birthday or for next Christmas coming up, it's a really great thing to, to ask for as a gift. I've had, uh, so I've been working in fashion for 10 years now, and I've had two of these brushes in 10 years, and I use it all day I use it on every single client um, every single event every single show this brush comes along it's my like go-to brush so although they are quite expensive they're around 100 pounds it just lasts forever it's such a good investment but I'm just using that for detangling the brush that we're going to use for um, our back brushing is a YS Parks back combing brush um, so when we use a brush to back comb what it does is it catches the small hairs so you get all of that tension and back combing, but you aren't pulling the hair from the top down into it. So you end up with more hair left to play with. The other thing before we start this that I want to just touch on is um, when we are doing the back combing here, I want holding it. So we're gonna put some hairspray in there. Now, if you put your, 
if you spray your hairspray directly into your back combing and then back comb onto it, what happens? If I just show you the, the spray, if you can see it, can you see how the spray comes out of the aerosol, like really narrow and it gets wider? That, yeah. So is that when you spray someone's hair, you get all of the hair. So mm -hmm. if you spray your hairspray, even if you're directing it into the roots, there's always a fallout that will go onto the rest of the hair. So then you've made this hair here sticky, so it's harder to actually do the hair as you go through the hair up. So what I like to do when I'm back combing is spray the hairspray like onto my brush. And then that way, I know that I've only put the back comb in where I, the hairspray in the back comb in and I've not put the hairspray anywhere else. So it makes my life yeah. easier then as we start to sort of sculpt and create the style. You can see from now how strong that back combing is, but I've still got all of this hair left to work with. I've not pulled it all down into there. Fantastic. At some so, point, Richard, would you be able to show us the close up of the brushes like you did with yeah. the grips earlier? Margaret's asked um, if she can see a close up of the brushes. So that's the Mason Pearson brush. So you can see how it's got lots of different um, bristle lengths in there. So it's really great for um, getting all the way through. And then this is the Wires Parks brush. So you can see again, we've got lots of different bristle lengths. You'll notice all of the brushes that I use are all bristle brushes. Um, I'm not a big fan of ceramic or plastic brushes, but that's just personal taste. So if you prefer ceramic and plastic brushes, excellent. Um, I just prefer bristle brushes. I find that using a brush that is a natural um, product anyway, I get more tension and grip on the natural product of the hair. I find plastic and metal brushes just a bit slippy and prefer these. Um, so we're going to do three rows of back brushing. Okay, so we've done our first one. Our second one, we're going to spray our hair straight in our brush. And we're going to push that down. And then we're going to take our next one across here. And we're going to do the same and we're going to spray it on. Um, a great, when you're doing clients in the salon, spraying the hairspray on your equipment is a great way of getting around those clients that want these complicated, intricate hair ups, but I don't want any hairspray on. By prepping the hair at the beginning, I've got all that hold from the setting lotion in there. And then by using the hairspray on my brush, I'm not spraying it over a head. Um, so they tend to be a little bit more forgiving with you using it. Yeah. Can you give us um, the name of that brush that you're using again, Richard? We've had somebody <laughs> yeah, ask it again. Um, so this one that we're back combing with is the YS Parks back combing brush. Um, they are like numbered. It hasn't got the number on it anymore. It's like worn off. Um, but if you look online, YS Parks brushes, and this is their back combing one, back and combing. you can see it there again. It, there I've go, used Gina. lots of different ones, and this is absolutely the best one that I've like come across. Perfect. So um, we've got our back brush in, in here now, and you can see how strong that is in the roots. Mm -hmm. So we put our hairspray in by applying it on the brush rather than the hair. So this hair under here is still really free flowing, um, but we've got all of that height and volume in here. So our next step would be to smooth that out. Because we've not pulled the hair down really, really far, there's not actually, you can see if I turn this all the way around, it's not really that messy, um, the back brush in here. So it's quite easy to smooth out. And all I like to do is just grab a little bit of hair from in front of it to brush over the top and just smooth out that top layer. Sometimes you can end up, if you're going too heavy handed, you can end up undoing all the back combing that you've just put in there. And then we're gonna turn her around again. There we go, all the way to here. So we can see that nice volume that we've got in. So, with our volume, we want this area to stay where we put it. We don't want it to like wobble around. We don't want it to move. So this would be somewhere that we would use grips. We would use Kirby grips. Um, so I prefer, I don't know if you can see mine well here. So I prefer grips that are, um, don't have like the wiggle in them. And that's just from um, working on photo shoots and things. When they have that little wiggle in them, they can catch the light, you know, in the cameras. So I tend to prefer flat grips. Um, so they're the ones I've got used to. But I find the same when I'm doing weddings or anything. I don't like to use anything that's going to catch the light in a photo. So I'm um, looking for sort of better quality grips and pins is always something I'd advise. What you'll find when we're doing this today is we don't really use a lot of pins and grips because if you use the correct tools, the correct pins and grips in the correct places, 
then you don't need a lot of them. It's when you're not really sure what they're going to do and you're hoping they're going to keep them in place that you end up putting, you know, 100 grips in it. Um, I like to think that I want the client's hair to be as easy for her to take down as it was for me to put up. So I like to keep going pins and grips to a minimum and not put too many in just for the sake of it. Right, so we've got our hair where we've got it. We've got our volume, so we need to lock that in place. So what we're going to do, where am I going to stand? Let's go this side. What we're going to do is we're going to take a small piece of hair from this side and then a small piece of hair from this side of your, of your volume. So these are coming from, can you see here? They're coming from the scalp. They're not yeah. sort of like part of the volume themselves. And then what we're gonna do, I'm gonna put a little bit of hairspray on the hair. Just while Richard's doing that, just to yeah. answer your questions um, about being able to watch the video again. So you'll be able to watch this video again on Facebook and tomorrow we'll be putting it up on HJ's IGTV and on um, our YouTube channel as well. So there'll be multiple ways of watching it. Um, yeah, excellent. And if you do have any questions about like any kit we're using, any of the fabulous tools we're using, or if you want to just sort of like ask any tips on your hair ups in the salon, you can give me a shout on Instagram at Richard Philly Park. If you just slip in the DMs, I'm, I'm always happy to help. And I love to see the styles that you create with the, the information. Oh, hello, everyone. I think we've just had a slight problem there where... Um... We've lost Richard. So I think we're still live. So hopefully we'll be able to get Richard back into the room. Um, oh, what is the Facebook group, please? So um, yes, so if you go to Hairdressers Journal on Facebook, you'll be able to um, watch back the live on there. Just had a question there asking about that, but we're just going to see if we're able to get Richard back so I think we've just temporarily lost him for a moment. I'm just going to find out what's happening there. Oh, that Julie's just said she didn't realise that grips came in a straight variety. So yeah, we're just going to see what's happened. Lauren has said, if only I could be holding the pins up for you. <laughs> I hope you're all enjoying this session. And if you do have any um, specific questions, do let us know, because I'm hoping we will be able to get Richard back and we'll be able to answer those questions. I know we did have a few questions of people um, wanting to see the silencer in action again on the hairdryer. So nearer the end, once we get Richard back, we'll be able to switch on that hairdryer so you can hear what it's like with the silencer. And we've got more of these styling masterclasses coming up. So do let us know as well what you'd like to see from them moving forwards. We're going to have um, one a week on Tuesdays, HJ Styling Masterclasses supported by Babalist. So do let us know as we'll be putting those programmes together. If there's anything specific you'd like to see from them. There we go. Oh, I, I think, think we've I got... lost you. Sorry, gang. No worries at all, Richard. Everyone's been, been everyone's been hanging in. Yeah, we've just been, I talking, been talking away. For ages, and I've no idea where I was up to. I was nattering away, and then I went, "Hello." I oh, know. Um, <laughs> where did we get up to? I'm so sorry. I didn't realize oh, you weren't there. No worries at all. So yes, did we so, do this? I think yes. We've pretty much seen that. So that sounds good. Yep. And we were talking about the different types of grips. Um. Yeah. Um, so we've got so, we. Yep. Oh my gosh! I'm so sorry. I lost you. Um, oh, don't, so don't just worry. To, just to recap. So we've done our volume through here. We've taken a small section of hair from each side. We've crossed that hair over, pushing it up, and then we've locked our grips in place by crossing the grips over. Did we get all of that before we got lost? We got most of that. I think we didn't get the crossover. So okay, I think cool. that's we'll where jump we got back into lost. it really quickly then. 
yeah, you'd kind of shown us both sides that you take you hadn't you taken it from the sides, and then that's kind of I've it, really been talking there. ages about anyone there. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, so we're going to take these two sections of hair, and these are coming from the head. We're crossing them over, and then we push everything up. So you can see how that elevates everything in place. And we're going to take our grips, and we're going to put one grip in in one direction, and the other grip goes in in the other direction. Um, so we're crossing the grips over in this position. So we've got two curvy grips, which we're crossing over like this in the hair. Can you see how we've got the opening of the grip at the top as well? If you put them in this way round, then the hair can slide out of the bottom. So we always want to put them in that way round. So you've got a closed end so nothing slides out of it. Brilliant. You can see how structurally sound that is. That's going to hold everything in place. So we know that just those two Kirby grips put in in the right direction, crossing over each other, is enough to support all of this weight and all of this volume where we want it to be. Fantastic. So our next bit that we're going to be doing, gang, is we're going to be looking at how, we, so we've learned about how we elevate the hair, how we put volume in and how we lock it in place. Our next thing that we're going to be learning is how do we move all of the hair from one side of the head to the other side and keep it there. Brilliant. Remember, everything that we're doing today, I mean, we're doing a French pleat. You, you know, you're all aware of what that hairstyle looks like. I'm not trying to teach you a hairstyle today. We're just going through the fundamentals of how we create hair up. So it's important to remember that um, if you understand properly how you move hair from one side of the head to the other, how you elevate it, how you lock it, how you fold it, how you wrap, wrap the hair, you can create anything that's in your imagination. But if you don't understand these fundamentals and how hair fits together, then when you try and experiment with hair up, it tends to be a disaster. So we're looking today at skill sets and fundamentals that you can implement into other styles rather than a finished hairstyle that we're gonna be showing you today. Everyone's loving it, um, Richard. They're loving all these fundamentals. Just before we move on to the next step, um, yeah. D, D Mills has asked, would you be able to show the mannequin from the side? Oh yeah, um, absolutely. And would, would you be able to show where the hair from the sides came from? Did it come from where the temples are? Um, so you can see this is the, the side of the mannequin. So you can see yeah. the nice volume that we get. Um, what we want to be looking at when we're doing this to um, everybody suits hair up. Everyone, everyone's hair looks great up, but what can happen sometimes when we do clients' hair up is we know maybe like two or three styles, so we do them on everybody, and everyone's face shapes is different. So what you have to take into account when you're dressing hair and doing hair up, in the same way that we, you know, give people a center part in or a side part in or a fringe or a side fringe because of the shape of their face, your hair up should reflect that. If you think about your client's face shape and how you can best make that look like an oval, that hair is going to look the most photogenic and she's going to get the best selfies from it. So can you see here how we have, if I just move this out of the way, by doing the, the um, volume and pushing it forward like we do, can you see how that then goes in this direction? What that does is it then follows down into the cheekbones and the jawline of your client. Mm -hmm. So it makes everything look longer here. So when she's sort of, you know, posing in her camera and look at her taking her pictures, her face is going to look the slimmest because you've gone backwards. If you go up and really high, you're going to make the face look longer. And if they've got a slightly longer face anyway, then that's not going to look nice. And she's going to think she doesn't suit hair up. So always think about your face shape when you're doing hair up to get the most rebookings out of it. Because if her selfies look great, she's going to book you again to do it. But I digress. Um, to <laughs> talk about the volume here. So the bit that we've taken to wrap around the back is taken from the side here. So above the ears and below where your back brushing is. And we've taken that from both sides, taken it to the back, crossed and then pulled it up. So it's not coming from the front, it's coming from the temple. Well, in line with the temples, but by the ears here. Is that help? Brilliant. Yep, yeah, definitely. I hope that um, yeah. that answers your question, Dee. There are more questions coming in, but I'll let you keep going, yeah, Richard, and we'll try, right. we'll try, we can try and do the questions see, at the talk, end. As you can see, I'll just talk the whole way through. So yeah. <laughs> we'll jump in with questions, so I know that you're all still there and have not lost oh, you again. Perfect. So we're going to put all of the hair onto one side of the head. I'm going to look at how we do that. So we've got our texture spray. We've got our satin lotion in here. We've blasted it dry, so we've got an open cuticle, and we've tonged it, so we've got movement to help us bend it. But what I want is a little bit more grip in the roots where I'm going to be putting pins and grips. So I'm going to go in with a dry texture spray, and I'm going to spray that throughout the hair before we start this section. 
Just while you're doing that, Richard, yeah. um, would you be able to um, tell us where the dolly heads came from? We've had a question about um, how much are the dolly heads for the very long hair? Um, so this is a pivot point dolly head and it's called Vanessa. Um, it's the best one for hair up. You can see she's got absolutely tons of hair. And what's really nice with the pivot point heads is the, um, the injection point of the hair, so where the hair goes into the head, flexes in all directions, whereas some of them sort of come out the head quite hard and then they're hard to sort of move around for hair ups. So these are great doll heads for hair ups or for like if you're doing precision cutting because the hair really lies exactly where you want it to be. So this is a pivot point and um, Vanessa um, doll. Perfect. And we're getting a lot of love um, from everyone tuning in saying this is brilliant for apprentices because they have to do this style for their MVQ qualification. Um, so having Absolutely. It, yeah. Um, so our apprentices are should be all signed up. So hey, gang. Um, oh, hey, hopefully you're tuning moment, in. <laughs> uh, they should be there. Um, and they've all been given dolly heads and curvy grips to like follow this along. But hair up something that in our salon, everybody is trained to do. So um, we don't just have one or two people that can do hair up. Everybody can do hair up. And this is how we teach it. We teach even older stylists that join us that have been in salons where they don't like to do it are all sort of taught through the process of how we do hair up here, including the prepping um, and the shapes and the construction. A lot of the time at um, colleges, you sort of, you'll maybe do this style twice and then not do it again for another 18 months before you go on the floor. So you don't really understand it, which is why I like to break it down into each section and what each section does and how it works so that it's easier to put that information into different hair up styles. Definitely. Well, it's brilliant. So thank you very much, Richard. And oh, don't no forget, problem. everyone, you can watch this back. If you haven't been able to catch it while you've been watching, you can watch it back as many times as you like on HJ's Facebook, IGTV and YouTube channels. Um, so to bring this hair to this side of the head. So with any hairdressing, um, there's, there's no new hairdressing. Everything's been done and everything that we're doing now is a reinterpretation of something else. So a French pleat can look really... 60s it can look really old lady it can look super bridal and the things that change all of those um looks from the same hairstyle construction is the texture that you choose to do it in so for me i like hair ups that look almost like the client's done it herself so i like them a little bit more textured and a little bit rougher um unless it's for like a specific um request and they want it more polished but in general if it's left to me i like it looking a little bit more lived in the reason that I prefer that is when we, if you look at any on my Instagram, Richard Philly Park, um, at any of my um, editorial stuff, you'll see a lot of the time um, I like to put little imperfections and things that are a little bit wrong in my hairdressing. I think that it helps to draw the eye when you're doing hair up. If you have done something that's super, super perfect and really polished, it's really quick and easy for your brain to look at that, absorb that information, think, oh, that's nice and move on. But if there's like something that's just a little bit off with it, whether that's the texture or um, the volume or the, the, the direction of the hair, it's just a little bit um, odd. It you look at the hairstyle for longer, it takes longer to absorb that information in and to decide if you like it or not, you sort of look at it for a little bit more. Um, from a client point of view, what that means is more of the ladies in the toilets will tell her how nice the hair is because they'll all be staring at it rather than just looking at it for a split, 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 split second and thinking it's nice. You want to draw people's attention. So in that, um, when we bring, let me just lock her in, she's getting a bit wobbly. When we bring the hair over to this side, what I like to do is I like to do it with my fingers rather than with a brush. So if we were doing a really polished one, if it was a wedding and you wanted to be very sleek, I would get a, um, I call it a ponytail brush, but you can see um, this brush that we've got here. Can you see how dense them bristles are in there and you can't yeah. see through them? This type of brush is fantastic for if you want it really sleek because it pulls all of the hairs in place. Mm. But so we don't, we want it to be a bit more what? textured. So I'm gonna use my fingers. Okay. And what was the name um, of that brush, um, Richard? This is a Japanese one. It is um, a print brush and it's number 501. And um, you can see here at the bottom, if you can see that. Brilliant. Yeah, we did have a question actually. Helen was asking, yeah. do, you re do you recommend a certain brand for blow drying brushes? Um, so yeah, I use, um, like we said, I'm just trying to see where my equipment is, my blow drying brushes. Um, let me run and get one and show you. Perfect. Um, I use the same as... I think everyone will agree, Richard's setup for us this morning is beautiful, isn't it? 
well, I had everything set up and I've gone through <laughs> everything, but I didn't put glow dye brushes out. So sorry. Oh, that. no, I was just saying to everyone how great your setup is, that the view that we've got is lovely. Oh, thank you. Um, so these are the brushes that I use for blow drying. You can see it's a little bit hairy from where I um, <laughs> did mine. <so>. Um, <laughs> so this is the brush that, um, that I use for blow drying. So again, this is a YS Parks brush. Um, I, I, you can see it's got natural bristles in, so it really pulls the hair. Um, I've got them. And see, and like in every size. Oh wow! Like so there you go, Helen. That's what that's what Richard uses for blow drying. Um, like we said earlier, when we're dressing hair, I prefer a natural bristle brush because it really pulls the hair, um, and they're really tough on the hair, so I get more smoothness. I find with like a metal or a plastic one, it's like a bit slippery, and um, so that's why I prefer those ones. And like the Mason Pearson, I think that the the better quality equipment that you're in a position to get, the longer mm -hmm. it will last. Um, obviously, it's like an apprentice, you're not in a position to spend £80 on a brush. Um, but when you're a stylist, you've got to think, this is your craft, this is your trade. It's what you've chosen to do with your life. Um, to then use equipment that costs you £6.99 and the wholesalers makes no sense to me. You should want to put everything into it that, that you can. Anyway, um, so we're going to move this hair over to the side. So you can see we're going to pull it over with our fingers like this. What we want to do is we want to lock this hair in place. So again, this is somewhere that is appropriate to use a curvy grip. And we want to anchor all of that hair over here. So we're going to hold the hair in place and then we're going to open our grip. I'm going to start at the bottom and we're going to go up. Now each grip, if you remember when we were at the top, we crossed the grips over to make them stronger. Yep. What we want to do through the bottom here is the same process as we're going up the head. So each grip, my ear again. Sorry, oh, guys. <laughs> Just while you're doing that, Helen said she struggles with some brushes with the handle and the grip on it. So it might be worth trying those brushes that Richard recommended yeah, I mean, for you there. Um, you can see the handle on these are wooden ones and they're sort of like, they, they're ergonomic. So they've got like the shape of your fingers in. So they sit really, really nicely. Yeah. So there you go, Helen. Could be worth a try. Um, right. So you can see we've got all of this in place. I'm going to try and bend, not bend over too much so I lose my ear <laughs> And then our next one, we go up and we cross over and we do that all of the way until we get to the top. You'll also notice that you should always be using your fingers to open your curvy grips. You don't want to be putting them in your mouth to open them. Um, it's gross anytime, but especially mm -hmm. at the moment um, and over the next few years, as we have the fallout from COVID and what is and isn't appropriate anymore in a salon environment, it's really not appropriate to lick your equipment before you put it in someone's no, hair. No, so, that's a very um, good point. <laughs> it needs to be opened with your fingers. It's not difficult yeah. to use your finger or use a ring or something, but use your fingers, not your mouth. Yeah. And um, also so it'd be all... difficult with a face mask on these days to do that anyway. Did, yeah. <laughs> so all of our grips we've got in an upwards direction. So remember again, when we were doing this area here, we want to make sure that the grip is like this in the hair. So this is the bottom rather than like that, because like that, the hair can fall out of it. So all of our grips are all placed in an upwards direction, except for our one at the top. So you can see how strong this is here, but at the top, we've still got like a little bit of end. At the top, we want to do one in the opposite direction, like that. So they've gone up, and then the top one you do down, crossing over, and that locks it in place. So all of that hair now will absolutely stay there. It's not going to move. It's not going to wiggle anywhere. Perfect. Are we still there? Yeah, we're still all still here, still going strong. I'm nervous now. I'm going to lose yours again. Oh, no, don't worry. Um, oh, this is interesting. You said you can get a magnet strip that goes around your wrist and stops yeah, you see from... Them, yeah, Yeah, oh, brilliant. Do you, would you recommend those as well to stop you from having the temptation of putting clips in your mouth? Um, well, I don't have that temptation. So um, it, it's, it, it's something that was sort of drilled into me like really mm. early on not to do that. So it's never really been something that I've done. Um, but some of our stylists here, we have to sort of, you know, catch them and be like, you know, stop putting it in your mouth. Um, it is, you know, a habit for some people. But I have seen those bracelets with the, um, with the magnet on that you put your clips on and then you use the side of it to like open them as you go in. And they're great. But I really don't think it's difficult, you know, to just on your finger, open it as you go. Yeah. It's not a, a complicated, you know, or fiddly thing to be doing. No, maybe that's something people can practice during lockdown if they haven't mastered yeah, that, definitely, that definitely. skill yet. 
So we've got everything over onto the side. We put all our clips in an upwards direction and we put our last one in a downwards direction to lock all of them in place. So we brought this right over to one side of the head. But as we were saying earlier, these are about understanding how we do the different aspects of hair up and you can put them into something else. So you can do this same process. If you do that in a diagonal line, and then you have all your curls, you'd get really nicely tumbling curls all down to one side, which, you know, a really popular um, bridal hair up or event hair up, but you've got that sturdiness inside it to then be able to pin your curls sort of like loosely onto it. So um, don't only think this works for a French pleat, it works for all hairdressing, all dressing of hair when you want it to be on one side of the head. So next, um, what we need to do now is we need to learn how we get all of that hair folded in on itself and up to the top again. So that's what we're going to be doing. To do this, we're going to be using pins. So this is the pin that we're going to be using. Can we see that? Yep. Excellent. So it's quite a, um, a strong pin. You can see it's quite, it's quite thick and it's quite long as well. We're also going to be using in a bit some smaller, finer ones. Um, but for this process, we're going to be using our big, heavy pin. So we're gonna put some texture spray into this tail again. And um, you'll notice at this point, a lot of people when they're doing French pleats will now back home this hair here. And um, I don't like to do that. Like we said at the beginning, I like the hair up to be as easy to take out as it was for me to put in. And if you've you know, back combed every inch of it with four cans of hairspray and 300 grips in it, it's a really unpleasant experience getting it out. So the client will think twice about doing it again. Whereas if she can sort of get it out, give it a brush, and it's still got a bit of a wave in from that tongue at the beginning, the next day, then she's going to be more inclined to want to do it again. So we've got our pin. And we want to elevate all of that hair out to the side. And then what we want to do is put our thumb along the line of the Kirby grips. So we're using our thumb along that line, and then we fold all of that into here. So you grab in the whole thing and you form, you can still feel the grips underneath. Brilliant. Denise, can you clarify if you'd like to see the whole mannequin closer? She's just asked, can we see it closer? But I'll ask, I've just yeah. asked her to clarify if she wants to see. I'll just show you, so it's okay. There we go. Can you see that? Yeah. So all of the grips that. we put in an upwards direction. So the closed part of the grip is always at the bottom. And then our top one here, we've done the opposite way to lock that in place. And you can see here at the top, we've got our crossed grips to hold everything up. Perfect. I hope that's um, helped you there, Denise. Everyone's loving the way you show everything against your hand as well, Richard. That's um, been really helpful for everyone. Um, excellent, right. So next step, like we said, we're gonna put our thumb here and we wanna fold that hair into your thumb. So you're holding it like this. Your thumb should still feel the Kirby grips underneath. You should be able to feel those along your thumb. And I'll just get my pin ready. So like you said, when we were coming in this direction, I want to have a little bit of texture going through this hair up. I don't want it to be really polished. So I'm gonna do the same on this direction. I'm not gonna put my brush into it and smooth it, but if that's the type of style you're doing, it's really easy to sort of um, edit and bring that into it. So I'm gonna put my thumb in, we're gonna put that there. And then we just twist around. So it's just simply your thumb in and then we twist the hair. So thumb in yeah. here and we twist like this. Brilliant. I'm gonna stand in front to do it though because it's a bit difficult from the side. <laughs> so we'll see the finished result in the second. You can see like that. Then using your pin, what we wanna do is put the pin in the opposite direction and then fold it back on itself and push. And you can see how that one pin can support the weight of all of that hair. Wow. So what we're doing is we're putting our pin in the opposite direction and then we're folding it back on itself and pushing it into the hairstyle. If we just push the pins in like this, they're not actually holding anything in place. It'll slip out. You want to almost sort of like knit the pin into the hair up and you can see how it will hold it all in place really, really easily for you. Brilliant. So the reason that we use a pin at this point is we, if you remember from the beginning, we use pins anywhere we want flexibility, anywhere that we're not sure that we want that to stay there. We're just sort of like working with it. So what the pin enables me to be able to do now is to 
Gosh, that ear again. I must have really big ears, gang, because these do not stay in. <laughs> um, what this pin enables me to do now is to tweak and move that hair. If I had put a Kirby grip at the top, holding it in place, then I wouldn't have been able to move any of the hair because the Kirby grip is a finishing tool. It's for locking the hair in place, not for molding and working with. So again, as we go, I'm gonna work with my pin and I need that to come a bit more central. So I'm gonna go in that direction and then fold it back on itself, yeah? Brilliant, I'm just gonna give you the heads up, um, Richard, that we're getting towards the end now. Oh, sorry, Dan, I can waffle on, can't I? Look, oh, don't worry, no, it's, everyone's loving it. Um, we're nearly finished. Um, <laughs> so we're gonna go in this direction and we're gonna fold it, sorry, in that direction and fold it up. Now, once we've got those pins in place, um, what we need to remember is we put our pin in so as that it flexes and we can move. So that piece of tool in the hair is now flexing and moving. So we need to anchor it in place. So to anchor that in place, what we do now is you want to get a Kirby grip and we're going to find our pins and we're going to put a grip over the Kirby grip like that. So then what the Kirby grip will do is it'll lock that pin and it'll stop it from moving. So those three pins that we've got in that French pleat can now be locked in place using three Kirby grips. So we're able to do this entire um, structure with only six pins and grips. Mm -hmm. So like we were saying earlier, if you use them correctly, you can get better quality ones because you'll use less of them so they last a long time. So we need to put our finger in to our pleat, find our grip and we, sorry, find our pin and we put our grip over the back of the pin. So the Kirby grip itself isn't actually touching our French pleat or holding our pleat in place. The grip is going across the pin and the pin is what's holding it in place and it's locking it there. So it's just all again about construction and thinking about how these things go together. Fantastic. Um, right, so sorry, I'm really conscious of the time now. So let's get finishing. And if anyone has any um, more questions they'd like to ask, if you um, start getting those questions in now and then we can do like a um, speed round of questions for Richard at the end. Yeah, excellent. Um, so our sides here, remember we talked about earlier um, about thinking about the shape of your client's head. So if you go really high at the top and then really tight at the sides, unless you've got a round face, that isn't going to look good. You're going to make a face look bigger. So we would only go tight at the sides and high at the top if the client's got a rounder face shape. If the client shape is more of a triangle shape or more of an oblong shape, you're going to accentuate everything and make it look not photogenic. So if you have got a client in that position, we need to now widen the sides from the front of it to balance and create that oval face shape that we're trying to achieve with all of our haircuts, always thinking about how different bits of hairdressing interlink. So we want to put some volume in the sides. So we're going to do the same as what we did on the top. We're going to spray our hairspray onto our brush. And then we're going to back brush into these sides. And you can see by back brushing, we got a really strong hold, but we've still got all of this hair left to play with. Perfect. And just while Richard's doing that, just to answer your question, Kelly, the dolly head was from Pivot, pivot Head. Pivot Point. Pivot, um, pivot, pivot point. point. And it's the um, Vanessa Head. Vanessa Head. Point. Um, so we're going to elevate this out to the side and we're going to back brush in here once we put our hairspray on our brush. Now, what I like to do when we're doing, taking uh, the front of any hair, hair up into the rest of the hair, what can happen a lot is your like, client will have lots of layers and lots of different lengths around the front. So you end up taking each piece as a different section and it ends up with loads of curvy grips mm -hmm. in. If you elevate the hair, um, she hasn't got a haircut, but if you elevate the hair and find the haircut, so find where your sort of layers are through here or wherever they are, and at that point, twist them together, what you're using then is the strength of the haircut to help your hair up. So by twisting it together at the point of the layers, you can then bring everything across and grip that in place and it will stay with a minimum amount of grips. So again, we want this to stay in place. So we're going to grip it. And what we need to do, um, where we twisted the hair around, 
if we put, say that's our twist, if we put our grip across the twist like that to lock it in place, you're going to put a big flat point in the middle of your hair up. So what we want to do is we want to put our grip through the twist like that so it disappears inside it so is that then your hair up stays nice and full all the way and you don't have like a dint in it that you've then got to hide going forwards so we'll Brilliant. do the same on this side and i'll show you just while you're doing that so, on the other side and um, richard i'm just going to get in a question from becky saying if you're looking to build up a decent set of blow dry brushes what's the best size to start with um i would always start with a medium let me show you um, I don't think that you can see very well the sizes on here. That's the size that I use. Let me see if it's got the number on. Um, so this is 50GS, 50GS in the wires parks. Um, that's the one that I use on pretty much every single client. Long hair, short hair, curly blow dries, you know, bobs, everything. That's like my go-to one. Um, and then I've got them, you know, bigger and smaller, you know, from there. But that's like a good sort of, you know, um, slightly smaller than a medium, I would say, is a good place to start with. Because then Brilliant. you can do your long hair, you can do your bobs, you can do shorter styles with it. If you go too small, then it's restrictive or too big, it's restrictive as well. Fantastic. So we Thank twist our hair over and we've gripped through the twist, not across the twist to keep our volume in place. And we are going to do the same through here. So we straight into that. We're going to back home our roots. And um, like I said, um, Vanessa here um, doesn't have a haircut yet because she's brand new. <laughs> so there's nothing for me to twist, but usually there'd be like some layer in like here and that would be the point that you'd twist mm. and then bring it back into it. But it's completely sort of like up to how that sits for you. So you can see we're going to twist that hair here and then we're going to use our grip and we're going to grip across. So in that direction, rather than across and putting a dint in the hair. Do you um, bend one of the corners to give it more hold? Julie has asked. One of the corners of what? Are you talking about the grips, Julie? Um, the, the grips are just are just as they are. So these are the grips that, that I use. They don't have any of the like wiggles in them. I use flat right. grips. Um, and they're, these are Japanese ones. So they're so, so strong. And um, they're designed for very sort of heavy coarse hair. And um, so they don't need any sort of like modification to help okay. them stay in place. Perfect. Um, so our last section, so we're going to elevate it and we're going to back brush into the roots. And we're going to twist it over. And then our grip again goes through the twist. So we're going in that direction rather than in this direction. Um, I'm really worried about our time now, gang. So I've not really looked at the front. Um, we'll finish at the back. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm going to put a little bit of spray into these ends. And then really, it depends on what kind of um, finish you're looking to achieve. So if I wanted something that was more textured, you just sort of pick these guys up. Are we still there? Yep, still here, still cool. going. Yep. We're going to pick these guys up and we're going to use our small pins now. So these are really delicate, fine pins. And these are more for positioning curls and movement in place. So they're not strong enough to take weight of the hair like we did earlier. These are more sort of positioning things in place while you're figuring out where you want it all to go. So remember, we don't want to use curvy grips on our curls because it locks them in and they become hard. We want to use pins on these curls now because they're more delicate and it allows us to position them and fiddle and move them around as we're going. Okay. The same concept, though, as when we use our big ones, you want to put your pin in that direction and then fold it over on itself to lock it in. We don't just push it in like that. There's no hold in a pin. If you just push it in, it needs to go in and back on itself. Brilliant. Um, we've had a few people asking where you get your grips from. Um, so a lot of them I pick up like when I'm traveling. So I'm, um, well, apart from the last 12 months, yeah. um, normally I work internationally, so I'm in Paris a lot. So I get a lot of my um, pins and grips from French wholesalers. They are just historically do hair up much better than we do. Uh, so they have a much more varied um, set of equipment. But there are um, websites that you can buy it on in the UK. Um, for example, um, Session Kit is a fantastic um, resource for pins and grips if you're looking for anything like that. Um, and there's lots of other you know, retailers out there. 
sometimes it can just be, you know, trial error. Um, in the salon, we use some Kirby grips that we get from our local wholesalers, which are just fantastic. Um, it's just trial and error with them. And like I said, um, try and spend a little bit more money on your pins and grips because you need less of them and they'll last longer rather than getting those huge, you know, boxes of a thousand for, for 10 pounds. They're never going to be good quality like that. Um, so we're going to get our hair, we're going to put our pin in the opposite direction and fold it back on itself. So the finish of this, you can do however suits your client. We can fold all of this into the pleat and exaggerate the pleat all the way to the top, sort of in a more conventional way. We can leave these textured ends out. If you remember, we said that we want this to look a little bit more like the client's done it herself, a bit more organic looking. So a slightly looser finish at the top, I think always works best. The same as when we were doing our big grips and um, our big pins through here. Now we've got all those little pins in there as we've been molding it. All those little pins are now really bendy. So we've got to go in now with our Kirby grips and lock those bendy pins in place to keep it all where we want it to be. Are you so able remember, to bring it a bit closer so we can see these last finishing bits, Richard? Can you see that? Yeah, perfect. Um, so we've been, when we're putting our pins in, rather than just sort of pushing them in like that, you want to get your hair and we go in that direction and fold it back on itself. So we're always sort of, sorry for leaning over, we're always sort of hooking the hair in. So we go like that and back on itself, like that and back on itself in these sort of positions. We then take our pin, our Kirby grip, and where our pin is in the hair, we want to put our Kirby grip over it to lock it in place. So you just sort of fiddle around, find your pin, and we lock it in place using your Kirby grip. What that does is it anchors everything in, so you've got all of the support of the grips, but the hairstyle itself feels very soft and loose. You don't have that sort of stiffness that you get if you use exclusively Kirby grips. Um, thank you for listening to me waffling on for. Oh, um, it's been a great session, Richard. I know we've gone we've gone a, a, <laughs> way over time, but I think everyone would agree there's been plenty of tips um, that's been happening during that session. Margaret has just reminded me that I promised um, that we would be able to hear the silencer on the hairdryer. Would you be able yeah. to? Um, now I'm pretty sure that it's going to sound really loud because there's only me in the salon. There's no other noise. <laughs> um, so if I do it, oops, Daisy. I mean, it doesn't make it completely silent, but it, you know, just sort of muffles yeah. the noise. It's just slightly ah, quieter. It now. Sorry, Dan. No worries. Right, so this is it without the silencer. And then. That's it, Yeah, That's you, it can hear the, you can hear the difference there. Uh, definitely when there's you know, yeah. three or four of them next to each yeah. other, that's when you can really tell the difference. And sometimes when um, someone in the salon gets a new one, they'll like forget to put the silencer on. And you sort of, when they turn theirs on, you all sort of turn because you can really hear the difference, mm -hmm. you know, when it's compared to one's next to of a silencer. So although it isn't making it quiet, it's just like muffling the noise. So it's a little bit more easy to communicate with your clients. Definitely. And that's like the Babyliss Pro um, Italia Brava hairdryer. Fantastic. And at the top of our comments on Facebook and in the Zoom, if you, um, you've got the website there, if you want to have a look at babblistpro.co.uk. And that silencer, I can imagine, is just a lifesaver with everyone in their face yeah, masks at the definitely. moment, not being able to hear clients as well. Well, Richard, this has been an amazing session. Everyone has absolutely loved it. Um, so many tips to take away from it. I do hope everyone will watch it back as well if you didn't catch everything um, and have a go at um, with a dolly head and play along with what Richard was showing you today. And um, thanks so much, Richard. No problem. Thank you all for listening. And remember that you can send me your hair ups or ask any questions on Instagram at Richard Philippart. Thank you. At Richard Philippart. Check it out. And he's happy to um, speak to you on there as well. So yeah, please do ask him questions. Oh, thanks so definitely. much again, Richard. Have a great day, everyone. And thank you so much for tuning in. Thank Bye. You. Bye.